In this scene, we'll explore the buoyancy and vorticity settings in Exposure Effects. We'll learn how each fluid channel has its own buoyancy parameter and how changing them from positive to negative can invert our volume's vertical motion. We'll then see how increasing vorticity can add smaller details into our simulation and encourage curling motion. Finally, we'll look at turbulence, which adds random natural motion to our volume. All right, so here we have an explosion effects object. We have a torus primitive, and on that torus primitive, we have an explosion effects source tag. Now those are set to default, so of course, when I hit play, we see the resulting explosion effects simulation or solve. And what's happening is, is of course, we are passing these properties, we are passing things like heat and fuel into the voxels that are within our torus here. And then once they're in those exposure effects voxels, they can be solved for all sorts of different phenomena. We can calculate for different effects. And we're seeing a few major ones. The main motion we're seeing is upward, and that is actually our buoyancy. And we're also seeing a lot of curling. We're seeing some rotational motion in our fluid as well, and that's known as our vorticity. So once we've added our properties to our simulation, whether it be through an object source like we have here, or it could be a particle source as well. And we have no real way of influencing that fluid from our original source. So the way we do that, the look of our fluid, we go to the simulation tab of our exposure effects. And as you can see, we have several different panels. And within those panels, if we expand out the buoyancy one, you'll see we have parameters, different parameters that can control different properties of our simulation. Now we're gonna focus on buoyancy to begin with. And at the top of our buoyancy panel, we have the controls for gravity, smoke buoyancy, heat buoyancy, and fuel buoyancy. And then also we have vorticity, turbulence strength, and turbulence radius. We'll get to those a bit later on. But for now, we're gonna focus on the top four parameters here. They're all to do with buoyancy, including this first one, which is gravity. Now, gravity is set to a default of Earth's gravity, which is 9.81 meters per second squared. It's an acceleration, and that acceleration is towards the center of the Earth. And if we're stood on the surface of the Earth, of course, that is a downward force. And that's exactly what we assume in explosion effects. It is a force towards the bottom of the container, or we can think of it as negative Y. So if it's negative Y, how come when I press play, our fluid is moving upwards. There must be some other effect going on, some other phenomena that is causing our fluid to rise against gravity. So what exactly is happening here is really useful to understand the real world phenomena to help us understand why we apply this upward force in our exposure effect simulation. So in reality, what we are doing here is we have a fuel source. We ignite the fuel source with an ignition temperature. Once that reaction has begun, we get a combustion reaction, which actually generates heat. So we're actually burning, we're generating more heat from this reaction. And what that does, of course, is that's warming the air. That is warming the air that we're seeing here. And we're seeing obviously some smoke produced and the fuel is burning. So we're getting some, some flames as well. But the, the, the principle is that we're, we are warming the air. And what happens when we warm the air is it becomes less dense. So it expands and we get less matter, less molecules in that space. So because it's warmer and the surrounding air, because of course we're in, we're in a gas here, we're in a, another fluid, we're in the, the air, surrounding air, that is cooler and therefore the molecules are closer together, they're denser, so it weighs more and it pushes downward and it wants to force the, the warmer fluid out the way. So essentially it's going towards Earth and because of that, it creates this pressure differential and it forces our fluid upward, giving it this upward thrust, which is known as buoyancy. So this buoyancy force is, is simulated in exposure effects. We are not simulating the surrounding air. We don't need to do that. We can just apply the resulting buoyancies. And that's what these other settings are here. So we've got gravity. So gravity is obviously directly related to these. And if I turn gravity to zero, we'll actually see that our buoyancies, even though they're at, uh, we have some buoyancies, we have smoke buoyancy of negative 20, heat buoyancy at a positive 60, and fuel buoyancy at a negative 20, even though we have those, our fluid isn't going anywhere. There's a little bit of motion to it, but that's just from the curl in the tag, but it's not rising and it's not falling. 
So the reason for that, of course, is that we've removed that gravity. We've removed that idea that we are pushing the, the surrounding fluid down and causing the warmer fluid to rise. So I'm just going to reset that to the default. And we can now look at the individual buoyancies. So of course, we have smoke buoyancy and we have heat buoyancy and we have fuel buoyancy. Now we're actually solving all three of those things right now at default. And to make this really clear, I'm actually going to solve one at a time. So let's go to our, our Taurus here. Let's actually not add any fuel. Let's not add any heat. And let's only add smoke. So we're only going to solve smoke. There's going to be no burning going on. And let's lift our um, Taurus up. And as you can see, when I hit play, our smoke simply falls. And this is much like if you've got a colder we are just adding a denser fluid essentially to the surrounding air. So there's more mass in that in the volume of our torus. And obviously that gets pulled down by gravity. That causes that pressure differential. And it's now actually pushing the air out the way. So we actually get the opposite effect and it actually pulls downwards. So this is also, you can think of negative buoyancy as well. Is, is, uh, we often see that in colder effects where we have dry ice and the smoke will actually move downward in the in uh, or sorry, not the smoke, the, uh, the vapor will actually move downward because it's colder than the surrounding air. It's more dense than the, uh, the, the air surrounding it. Okay, so let's go back to the exposure effects object. And you can see we've got our smoke buoyancy control. So we can actually override this. So I can set it to 100. And all of a sudden, our smoke is behaving as if it has some heat involved, has some temperature, some higher temperature involved. And so we can fake, we can override, and we can control the look of our simulation. We can, f we can impart some buoyancy into our smoke without having to worry about the other ones, the heat and the fuel. So if you've just got a smoke simulation, say it's from uh, a, a smoking cigarette or something like that, a visual effects shot, it will be, you can have all of the other channels turned off and have the smoke buoyancy as a positive and it will rise. So I'm just going to reset that to the default and let's go back and let's test out our other channels. So of course, heat is exactly the same. The properties are added to our voxels, but of course, we're not seeing them because we are not displaying the temperature channel in our display tab. Go to our exposure effects object, display temperature, and you'll see our temperature. And it's obviously moving upwards because it has a positive buoyancy. And just like we did with the smoke, in fact, I'll do this whilst we're playing. I'll decrease the heat buoyancy. And you'll see there's actually a little moment where uh, the, the buoyancy of the heat, if I just suddenly drop it, the stuff up here doesn't all of a sudden decrease because it's got a, a velocity and eventually it's going to have to counteract that. And it's an acceleration. So we're swapping the direction of that acceleration. So we get a deceleration and then it returns into the other direction. And so I'll go back to positive heat buoyancy. Let's reset that to its default. And just like that, the heat, the fuel will also respond exactly the same. Now, when we combine all of these channels, so if we have our heat and our fuel active at the same time, you'll see all of a sudden we have a lot more heat in our simulation. And that's because I added the fuel back in. The fuel is burning, generating more heat. Let's go back to our exposure effects object. And you can see our buoyancies are all set to the defaults again. Uh, oh, let's go to the display tab, make sure we're showing our fuel and smoke this time. Go back to our simulation tab and back to our buoyancies. And now if I zero these out, or let's just actively zero them out, you'll see we don't get them rising, similar to how we had no gravity. So this is a neutrally buoyant fluid right now. It's the same temperature, it has no positive or negative buoyancy, and therefore it remains in the same space spent on y so of course if i reset those back to default what we can do is we can make some really interesting effects by um, having slightly positive heat buoyancy so not quite as much as it was before uh, it's rising a lot because of course we're getting this burning reaction but we could actually drop it to a really low amount and you'll see our fluid now drops in the simulation and this will change the look of your simulation completely, where it's, it's essentially upside down now. So maybe we're burning something that's producing an incredibly dense uh, um, smoke, the dense particles, and that's actually being drawn down by gravity, and we get the negative buoyancy.
So this is great for tweaking things. If you're finding your your flames, your smoke, your fire is rising too fast, it's it's moving too fast upwards. We can we can tweak these and um, balance them out. Now, quite common, one of the ones that I like to do is drop smoke buoyancy, but keep the others high. And what happens here is it's as if the smoke is cooling incredibly rapidly. But what happens is it gets carried by the heat, and as you can see, it kind of it still moves upward because the overall uh, temperature of that sim is high and therefore the smoke is being carried by the buoyant force of the heat. So if we wanted it to uh, really override the heat buoyancy, we'd have to either make the smoke extremely uh, negatively buoyant, so essentially as if it was very heavy. So there you go, I've gone for a, a huge negative 2000, probably too much. There we go. And there you go. So you can see the heat tried to lift it up there, but then the smoke overrides it and those buoyancies are, are uh, added together and we end up with a negative buoyancy overall of our fluid. Okay, so let's reset that. So the next slider we're going to look at is vorticity. Now, vorticity, when we're talking about uh, fluid dynamics here, is the, the fluid wanting to rotate. It's going to add angular momentum, angular velocities into the simulation. So if you imagine our main motion here is obviously the buoyancy, it's this upward force. And then surrounding that, we get these curls. We get these actual rotational curls. Now, we're not seeing too many of them at the moment. Uh, if we increase the resolution, we will see more as we increase the detail. So I'm going to decrease the voxel size to two. So we've dramatically increased the number of voxels. And you'll start to see a bit more of the vorticity. And you can see here that's going on right there. We're seeing some curling motion. And it's uh, counterclockwise on this side, and on this side we're getting it clockwise. And it's actually surrounding that main upward thrust motion, so we're kind of getting this sort of toroidal shape at the top here. Now, the vorticity slider allows us to encourage that vorticing. So we're actually increasing the amount of vorticing inside those voxels. So as I do this, and we can watch, I'll play again. Um, I'll increase the, the amount of vorticing in our fluid and it'll actually increase the detail. So you'll see here we're getting finer detail and if I increase it even more to 50%, we, we really are breaking up the fluid. We're really encouraging this rotational angular velocity. And you can see here it's actually made, given us a really interesting looking fluid, uh, more perhaps hinting at a larger scale of fluid which you tend to see, you see these, these larger big vortices and then smaller ones within that. So our slider here is actually just encouraging this, this vorticity. It's encouraging this angular velocity. Now, if you go too high, you may have seen it at the bottom of the sim there, it actually breaks the sim up. It, it um, diffuses the sim somewhat because these velocities are really over uh, um, counteracting the other advections and we're getting a bit of a diffusion. But if you find a balance, and I'm at 22% here, you can see you can add a lot of detail to your simulation, a lot of detail in the motion of your simulation uh, with the vorticity slider, and we're encouraging that rotational motion. So that's vorticity. That's one way of adding detail to our simulation. Another one is the turbulence. Now, turbulence is an artificial noise that we're adding into our sim but it's based on the velocities that we are inputting here so if i hit play and you'll see we've got turbulence strength if i increase that dramatically you'll see that we break the sim up really quickly and it's a it's quite a dramatic effect at this resolution especially and there we go we're sort of we're, we're really churning that simulation up with these artificial turbulences so i'm going to go back to our solver and i'm going to go back to our resolution that is a little bit less aggressive and you'll see our turbulence is diffusing our simulation much as vorticity would if we over increase that. So uh, the solution there, of course, is to either increase your resolution or decrease your turbulence strength. So if I find a balance, you'll see that I can increase it. I've doubled it from its default and it's breaking our fluid up. So this is emulating some extra velocities being added to our simulation, but it's a much more natural way of doing it uh, when we do it through this strength, uh, turbulence strength slider. And if I increase the radius, it's essentially the radius it's looking around. It's essentially a scale parameter. It's going to increase the size of that turbulence. And you can see now, if I go back to zero, you'll see the turbulence is much larger in scale. 
it's breaking up our fluid. It's giving a really nice looking uh, wafting uh, sort of wispy smoke there. So if we want to increase that even more, let's go to 100 or nearly 100. And you can see it's not changing too much now because really there's not much, uh, many, many more voxels to affect here. So we actually would increase the strength with that as well. And then you'll get that huge breakup of the fluid. And you can see it actually can get a bit carried away and we get this almost exponential reaction until it completely blows our sim up and we get this wild, wild um, turbulence. So you want to watch out not to overblow the turbulence, same as with the vorticity parameter, but it has this really great control. We have ways of adding different velocities into our simulation and it's the balance between these that, that gives you the great effects. So you can imagine here, this is a, a really good one. This looks a lot like some kind of uh, magical potion or something that's uh, really breaking up. It's got a lot of, lot of uh, random energies in it. So maybe it's something like a ghost or some spirited thing. And there we go. Okay, so that's the buoyancy and vorticity settings in our simulation tab of our explosion effects object. They're extremely powerful. If you overblow them in the case of the vorticity and the turbulence, you can diffuse your simulation, but you can counteract that by making your simulation higher res. And of course the buoyancy settings, we can match those to maybe different planetary gravities, different uh, uh, masses, densities of fluid, and we can create all sorts of different burning effects.